so, what are we doing today? Hello. <laughs> Happy Sunday. What are we doing? Well, we're, we're still working on Glowing Telegram, a tool for managing stream recordings, as I have for, uh, I guess like two months now, ish, a few streams. Um, and specifically, I think today we're going to, I'm going to try to do more UI stuff. So, uh, we, we did a little bit last stream, uh, but that ended up being more backend stuff to, um, group together the bits of text so that there was just less, um, segments is the word that we're using to describe each one of these things, segments of text in the transcript. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to improve this UI a bit to uh, make it so that it's still like the browser still hangs a little bit when you load this UI just because there are so many elements. And so I think there's a couple things we can do. One thing we can do is potentially show less stuff at the time uh, at, at once, show fewer segments at once and have like pagination, which I, I talked about last stream. And the other thing I think we can do is probably make a simpler set of components to show the text um, and do it in a more compact way because it's very hard. Like you can't see all the text here. It's like hidden inside of this text box. Um, and I, I think I have an idea. Listening to me, to me speak in this strange language while I clean. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, so making things better. That, that's what this is about. So we've, we've made things, we've made things that work. Like we're getting the, uh, the, the words that I said in a previous recording and it's turned into text, right? So now I need to figure out how to make it so that the UI is nicer. Hey, Death Row, how's it going? Good morning. Uh, I think you're somewhere in the U.S., so it's probably still morning for you anyway. It is the, the crack of 8.30 for me. <laughs> Just recovering? All right, yeah, you were, uh, you, you had a bit to drink last night on the East Coast, yeah. All right, so, and as my little thing here, I did simplify, there were other things here, but I decided what I wanted to focus on today was just improve the transcript UI, so okay. Having taken take note of that, how are we gonna do this? Um, how are we gonna do this? So let's find where in the code this view is. So this, this is to do with stream records, and we are in the front end. SRC. Uh, let's see, I made a folder called resources and a folder called streams. And then we have all of these React components in uh, TypeScript plus JSX, uh, aka TSX files. And this is a create view. No, sorry, it's edit view. And uh, here we go, here we go. And of course, so this overall component here is a tabbed form. We got tabs. And so you can see in this uh, stream edit component, we, we're doing a bunch of stuff, uh, taking advantage of React Admin's components to build out the form. And so the third tab here, transcript, just uses the stream transcript input, which is a custom component we wrote um, last stream or the stream before, whatever it is. So that's in this file. Let's make it a little bit, a little bit more space here. There we go. Um, and so the file exports, the default export is stream transcript input. Okay, and uh, that uses the React Admin uh, array input to essentially, like we have a list or an array. Uh, those terms are sometimes synonymous uh, of transcript segments. And what we're doing is we're saying for each transcript segment, show a something. 
uh, some kind of form for each one. And then we are um, let's see, form iterator. Right, right, right. So we pass in a form iterator with children. And I think what's happening here, oh, right, 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 right. So the way this works is that in the edit component, right, we're passing in these components, text inputs, to define how uh, the, the thing that repeats per segment, right? So if you wanna customize what's in, what shows up in the UI for each thing, we could customize this. Now, that's an option. That's an option. Hmm. Let's see here. So if we go back to this component. So essentially what I'm thinking I want is instead of having a, essentially a list of these forms, like here's one and here's another, here's another, here's another. What I want is something that looks more like just all of the text um, and kind of all in line. So it reads like you could just read through all the text, right? And then maybe you hover over and you can see the details, including like start and stop time and being able to uh, move the items or remove them, maybe. Something like that. Now, to get from where we are to there, there are some options, right? So we could just completely rewrite stream transcript input. Maybe not even use array input in form iterator. Or what? Hmm. So if we go back to here, what do we pass in here? So what are the props on array input? Variant margin. Um, oh yeah, so we can just look at the type, the array input props type, and it tells us what the options are. My curious loading is fetch disabled. Uh, oh, extends common input props. Okay, I don't see anything that would be helpful helpful for what I was thinking. Uh, maybe inform iterator. Simple form iterator. Simple form iterator props. There's an inline prop that could be interesting. What does that look like? Um, yeah, maybe we could try it. What, it. what does it look like if I say inline? I could also, you know, go look at the docs. <laughs> um, but where is the fun in that? Now, to actually have that show up in the UI, I think we never figured out how to make it so that Vite running inside of Docker would um, detect file changes. So I think we just have to restart their front end container. We are running Vite in dev mode here to be able to uh, run the, the front end code. But I have yet to figure out how to make it detect file changes. If I wasn't running ins inside of Docker, running the uh, Vite uh, dev mode would automatically detect any file changes and restart the, the server or what have you. So that should be good. If we refresh this, it's gonna take a minute to load, which is part of the problem. Um, the other thing is if we do want to have pagination to, to not show all of the components at the same time, we probably will need to just um, 
effectively at least make a copy of and edit array input. So if we're gonna do that, we might just ditch all of this and create a custom component that does all the work. So maybe that's where we are going to end up. And it looks like inline doesn't do anything. <laughs> just from what I can see from what's rendered so far. But again, you can see we're, we're struggling here to load the page just because uh, I think there's just a lot to render. Yeah, inline didn't seem to do anything. So, okay. Hmm. So. While there are some options, for how we could uh, kind of incrementally do stuff. I think what I'm inclined to do here is really just ditch uh, all of this, <laughs> all, all, you know, six lines or whatever, and we'll, we'll make a new thing. So we do want to keep our uh, button and stuff, but we're just gonna get rid of array input and simple form iterator and uh, I'm gonna do something like to do, to, to vote, to, to do. And form iterator goes away. We might, uh, at, at some point we will um, potentially extract out some of the stuff from in here that we're gonna, about to write into separate components, but that's not necessary right now. We won't need those, so I'm gonna remove those. And I should really define what the type is here, right? So let's say interface. Yep, that. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, and I think that I'm gonna do away with the idea of having children passed in. And we'll go back to edit here. So we'll change this into a uh, self-closing element. So we have data, task URL, field name, and label. I don't think label is necessary right now. given that this is sort of kind of a single purpose thing now. Label is missing, right? So we need to remove label from here. now. This can be this. And we don't need props here. So at least this will load as soon as I restart the server again. Fresh. This should load a lot faster. There we go, to do. So that was a lot faster than the previous load because we weren't showing all of those components. Um, and then the next thing to do is going to be to uh, grab the field, right? So the, the way this works, ha, uh, yeah. Interested in that offer. All right. So, what was it? Oh, yeah. So, the way this works 
is that um, we the component here gets some information. Uh, and I think for consistency sake, maybe we'll rename this back to source. So all of the built-in React Admin components, um, they take a source prop. So this is kind of like passing in information to the component. And that source prop tells the uh, component where in the form, where in the record, to find the data that it's interacting with. So that's typically source. And what we, what we need to be able to do is, okay, well, we have the, so the name of the source, if you will. But what we need to do is actually have access to the data. Um, and to do that, we want to um, actually, does async result loader do this already? Yeah, const record equals use record context. There we go. So we can we can use the same uh, hook. This is called, and um, which is going to provide us access to the record. And then we can say const transcript segments. Um, segments. At least that's what that's what we're looking for. There you go. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna look inside of the record, uh, which is stored inside of this const record, and we're gonna look for a property called source. Uh, and if that's not present, then this will be undefined. And so we'll instead get uh, an empty list. So transcript segments will always be, well, might always, TypeScript doesn't think it will always be a list, but it should be. Um, okay, let's see here. I think We might be able to tell. Does it, so does use record context take a um, a type parameter? It does. It does. So potentially we could pass in a um, uh, some type information to tell it kind of the shape of the record. Because right now it just says trans transcript segments is any, which is kind of the, I don't know what the type of this thing is because it can't know, right? Because RA record uh, doesn't know about whatever is inside of source. Putting all of that aside, uh, because this, is, this has a type of any, we can pretty much just do whatever we want with it. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to just, um, <laughs> we could do this. Uh, let's see, we could do this. Hmm. Do I want to do any of that? Not really. What I want to do is, um, I want to map over trans transcript segments. Like that. back to the rest of that. Let me just close out this function. There we go. I don't think we need the index here. Right. So we have a list, right? We have a list of segments that we want to display and they should be in the proper order uh, in terms of like the, the thing that first happened in the video, the first transcript should be the first thing in the list. I think that is true. Um, and what we can do here is, let's see, we probably do want to wrap this in a div. We are 
going to want to do some styling around this to make this look reasonable at some point we'll get to that um, and then I think we'll just do a span right and then we only want this this last bit we want to just display the text right now um, so we do segment dot text so because we told TypeScript here that the type of the argument for this function is of type um, the segment type or interface, uh, TypeScript does know that uh, there is a text property. So we could just uh, get autocomplete on that. It is warning us that we should have a key prop, right? Because we are essentially providing a list of things here a list of elements and React will want some way of keeping track of the identity of each element in the list for the purposes of re-rendering. Um, I think in this case, maybe the key that's going to make the most sense is gonna be the start timestamp of the segment. Yeah, I think so. I suspect that I'm not going to provide provide a mechanism for updating the start and stop times timestamps of the segments those will probably just be whatever they are until I change my mind <laughs> but for now uh, this might be good as I recall there there can be problems with using the index Um, so in other words, you know, we have five transcript segments, right? And if we, if we use the index so the zeroth, oneth, tooth, uh, so on and so forth as the key, I think there are problems with that. I'm not remembering exactly, uh, what the problem with that is right off the top of my head, but, uh, yeah. All right. And let's save this and we're not getting any errors. So that's good. So let's restart the server again. As soon as I find Docker, there we go. And restart. Hmm. All right, looks good. So if we refresh, then we should actually see text. <laughs> there we go. Believe it or not, yes, that this is accurate. I mean, it's it's PAL world, not power world, but uh, apparently the world's oldest wooden wheel was uh, found, not bound, in Slovenia over 5,000 years ago or old, whatever I said. Um, yeah, so this is the transcript from the stream back on the 24th. This all looks good. I mean, it's not perfect, but you can see where it it, it gets something wrong. Uh, it's like it, uh, you know, it didn't quite hear quite right, rather than it just being completely off the rails. Uh, so, but of course, this this loses something that we had before, which was an ability to edit uh, things here. So that's, that's going to be a thing we're going to want, is the ability to edit the segments. Also being able to see where the segments are and being able to see the um, see the start and stop time values might be important. Um, so I think to address that, I'm going to, I'm going to start by adding the information in line in the markup. 
and then we'll go back and do some styling. I think we're gonna do some stuff where we, um, you hover over, hover over, hold on, fix that alignment, there we go. Um, where you hover over the segments and you see uh, the additional information and we'll add some spacing and stuff too. So it doesn't all, so it's, it'll, it'll look better. Uh, so to do that, let's do some uh, effectively HTML, right? So we have a span here that contains kind of the, the segment, and then we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a few more spans here inside of that. And the reason I'm using a span is um, that it is kind of a unstyled by default inline element versus like a div that's a block element. Um, and let's see, how are we doing styling here? So we're using material UI, right? Uh, or, or rather React Admin is. Um, if we want to add some styling, we have some options, right? So I think there is a a top level style. Hey, uh, zero, 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 three, five, six. Welcome in. See you chatting for the first time. Good luck catching uh, that wild yamper. Yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, don't I have a top level CSS? I guess I might not have a top level CSS. Hmm. Maybe in public? Nope, nothing in there. Okay, interesting. So, how do I want to do this? Let's see, we could do, uh, let's see. What version of Material UI are we on, actually, is a, is a question. Um, there are a couple of different ways we could find that out. Probably the easiest thing to do here is to uh, CD into front end and npm ls, um, actually, yeah, I don't think we have a direct dependency, so I don't think it's going to be in the package JSON. I could be wrong. We are using React Admin uh, 4.14 ish. Um, is it? Let me go over to the um, React Admin docs, and we'll we'll trace it that way. I would use uh, npmls, but I don't know exactly what the the literal uh, package name for Material UI is. So it's just going to be easier to go through React Admin and see the version it's using and all that. Oh, you missed it. Better luck next time. All right, so React Admin is the framework that we're using for our UI. Go over to GitHub. Uh, let's see, what version is current? 4.16 looks like. Oh, um, this is like a, a mono repo. That's a bunch of sub packages in it. We probably want to look at uh, RA UI material UI. Okay, yeah, that's the that's the name of the package. So this is on five. What version did I say that we were uh, uh, a React admin were we on? Four point fourteen. So if we go and look at tags, there should be like a four point fourteen dot whatever. Probably six there. And so this version of RA UI material UI is using, ah, good, same version. So 5.0.something. 
So if we go find material UI, uh, is five the current version? Let's look at docs. Uh, material UI, there we go. So five dot something is the current version. So I'm not gonna worry too much about, oh, is it 5.0 or 5.15? The API should be similar. So how do we do styling? Like if we want to style our component, we could, you know, uh, we have an index.csx. We could like just import a CSS file probably, but um, let's see. When should I use inline style versus CSS? CSS alternative provides more advantages. Do I have to use emotion to style my app? Uh, emotion was what I was using in the other app, the um, Daily Jewel uh, calorie counting app. Uh, so it says it's not required, but if we're using the default styled engine, movie styled engine, which presumably we are. Okay, how do we do that? How do we use emotion? <laughs> how to guides, creating themed components. I think that's a little bit more than what we're trying to do right now. How many years would it take me to understand what I'm seeing? Well, uh, that's hard to say. Um, I've arrived here at this point through a very circuitous path. Uh, of course, starting from a point where none of this stuff existed. <laughs> so, um, what, uh, there are, there are, layers or levels uh two things so that there, there are levels of understanding uh is i don't know if that's actually a helpful statement um i guess another way of putting it is that there are things here i wouldn't say that i don't understand but there there are so many layers going all the way down to like the silicon that there, there's always room for learning more and getting a better, greater understanding of things. Uh, I, as in there are, there are implications of things that I don't even <laughs> see and know, uh, like 20 plus years into uh, writing code, front end, back end, what have you. Now that might sound daunting, but on the other hand, that means you know, there's, there's lots of opportunities to learn things. Um, you just gotta, everyone starts from a point and it just takes some time to pick up things, but you can be a bit choosy about what you learn and when. Um, but if you have specific questions, happy to try to, uh, to field those. Right now, I'm actually just looking for an example to remind myself how this is supposed to work. Is this is this is this doesn't look like what I want to do? Um, TypeScript style library and using styled components. I don't think. Yeah, that's not that. Uh, components. So like these are all the different React components that are part of the Material UI core library that we can use. But this is not what I'm looking for. Component API. Customization theming. Components. How to customize. So those geniuses who hack into top secret corpses, it's the corporate stuff for money at 12 learns to at a crazy fast rate. Um, 
there are lots of niches, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like a lot of those things are just right place, right time sort of things. You happen to be looking at the right place and you happen to know just the right thing at the right time to take advantage of things. But um, I've never really done any kind of, uh, uh, let's see, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, security stuff is, is not really my forte. I get what I'm saying. It's such a wide discipline, which explains why. The working groups, right. Yeah, nobody is going to know everything about everything. So there's, a, there's multiple factors too, right? There's having the skill to be able to like, if we're, if we're just talking about coding, right? There's having the ability to think through problems and analyze and have different patterns in your head that could be applied to different circumstances. And then there's having familiarity with uh, operating systems and libraries and technologies, programming languages and tools. So there's skills and knowledge. And depending on the kind of situation you're in, you need different skills and different knowledge. Um, and both of those things you can improve on. Uh, but it just takes time. You know what we could do? Since I'm struggling to find in the docs the thing that I'm looking for, let's go over look at the, look over at the other project. Uh, let's see, Daily Jewel. Let's see where I should have some examples here where I'm using the coding question. At CSS, wrapper styles. Uh, skills seem to be harder to develop because it relates to problem solving. Is it arguably down to IQ? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely. Um, there. Maybe there's. <laughs> IQ is kind of an interesting thing, too, right? It's, it's something you can learn how to problem solve and how to see, to, to know patterns and see how they apply. Yeah. I'm bad at math, so I never got the opportunity to do computer science and so never explored programming and coding. So when I was starting to learn how to code, um, I really believed that math wasn't necessary to learn how to code. And I think that's still true. But I think what I've come to understand over time is that there's a difference between the applied mathematics, you know, do algebra, <laughs> do calculus, and actual higher mathematics around proofs and more abstract thinking. And those aren't the same thing. So in a way, when you're programming, you're problem solving, you're doing abstract thinking, making models and representations of concepts that you reason about. And that is very math-like, but has nothing to do with, um, you know, more athrometical applied mathematics. Uh, another strategy here for kind of finding some ins inspiration for how to approach in a idiomatic way doing styling is we could go over to uh, React Admin and see how they're doing styling of components. For that matter, they might actually talk in their docs about uh, about that, but probably not. See, the React Admin has lots of components. It's a uh, 
just feel like it's a positive rain. Not sure what that means. Use media query theming. Uh, oh, reinforcement thing, right? That leads people to do software stuff. Yeah. Um, when I was young, uh, someone gave me a set of books on not computer science, but like how computers work and electronics and so my interest when i'm talking i think i was like 11 or 12 started with like electronics especially digital electronics and le learning about logic gates um and then i got my first computer and it it took a while but uh started really getting interest get, getting really interested in the idea of writing software and then a number of years of kind of just poking at it and prodding at it, getting better. You, you get told that you're good at problem solving, you need to, well, I mean, it's practice, right? At the end of the day, so many things are just a matter of putting in the time to do it. So if you are someone who, if you get told, oh, you're good at something and so you work on it some more, that could be a good thing in that you're going to practice, you're gonna do it more because you think, okay, I can do this. Um, but if you get told, no, you're not good at this, maybe that discourages you and you don't try anymore. Um, and that, that might be an impediment, right? I think the... <laughs> You're good at giving me bits. I'm all out of bits. I spent my bit my bit budget. <laughs> hey Dan. Is it alright if I call you Dan? Welcome in. Alright. Uh, what was he doing? Oh yeah, so we should like actually figure out what we're doing here. Um how styled MUI link. Okay, so this just uses a styled component. Uh, const link classes, styled MUI link. Interesting. Now, how are we all doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Other than trying to, struggling to decide how I want to do CSS in this component. CLSX, interesting, what is that? Ooh, what is this? Okay, class name, class name. So that's interesting. What is CLSX? Uh, having to clean. Yeah, I just wish I had the time to explore computer things, but picked up a degree you don't like, it takes up the focus, yeah. That's a problem. Um, a tiny utility for constructing class name strings conditionally. Ooh. I see. Okay, interesting. Is that how we're using that? Label classes that full width. Full width. label class is coming from. Oh, I see. Okay, and, and yeah, they are using styled. How does that work? So we, we wrap an existing component with styled. And uh, I think this part is optional, if I remember right. And then we pass in an object that has some CSS in it. So stack. Okay, so how does style work? Style is coming from Material UI, right? Okay. Hmm, okay. 
So let's let's try writing some code. It's enough hemming and hawing. <laughs> uh, let's see style, right? And then what we're gonna do is instead of directly exporting stream transcript input, uh, we can wrap it with styles. Yeah, like that, like that. And we could do all sorts of things, but I'm not too worried about that yet. Their example though here is kind of interesting, this label classes thing. I might borrow that, this, this structure. Yeah, I kind of like the, that. I've, I've not done something like this before, but this seems like it could be good to... So what we're trying to do here is we're matching up a class name um, a CSS class name here in the styling with how we're referencing it in the in the markup slash JSX. I kind of like that. I want to try. I'm going to try that out a little bit. So we're going to do this, and I'll figure out what I'm going to put in here in a minute. or Copilot is gonna suggest things for me. Um, yeah, that could be good. I don't know if we want, we probably want like a segment as a class. Yeah, like that. Now this is some interesting, what, what is this trying to do here? I don't, I don't think I actually want any of that. What else does it have? Like, I don't know that I want to display flex. I do want this bit though, for, to style the, the segment. Yes. And then, Last name. Okay. Okay. So I, it, I'm, it's coming back to me <laughs> how this is supposed to work, right? So we're gonna do this. We're gonna say class name, and we'll have to update our props. I guess if we want to apply a class to the whole thing, this can no longer be just a fragment. So if you didn't know what this, this empty tag here does, is it essentially says, hey, React, take all this stuff and dump it into the DOM, but don't put an element around it. Um, but React, add, uh, React components always have to return a single thing, a single element. So the fragment allows us to do that, but uh, if we want to wrap the whole thing in a class, then that no longer works. So we'll wrap the whole thing in a div instead. There we go. Uh, and I think that will apply our CSS. I don't want to display flex. I do want um, some padding, let's say. That's, that's going to be too much, but we're going to try this out just so that we can see an effect. And need to restart the front end again. Yeah, it's it's really challenging though, Zero, um, finding the time to do things outside of work. Uh, that was one of the things with streaming <laughs> is that, you know, I have a day job that I'm, you know, uh, working at. So having some time set aside, like schedule time. I am going to stream four days a week 
uh, three hours at a time. And I've been keeping that schedule pretty well for like 10 months. Um, has then, you know, dedicated playtime, dedicated like trying things that, uh, you know, coding wise that I can't do at work for various reasons um, is really nice. So did we, we did refresh, yeah, good, good, good. Uh, so if I reload this, we should see some visual differences. Hopefully this actually loads. I guess we're gonna find out. Nope, something went wrong. <laughs> uh, what does it mean? That is a big error, isn't it? Let's uh, let's look at the dev tools. Web developer tools. Yeah, the above error occurred in styled stream transcript input component. Good. Invalid hook call. Valid hook call. What is the first error, right? Um, these ones happen all the time. We can ignore that. You are loading Emotion React when it's already loaded. Interesting. Um, I wonder if that's actually a problem. I feel like I saw that before in uh, other another project. Valid hook call. Um, so in our component, now our, our only hook use is here. What about in the sub components? We haven't changed them though, so they should be fine. You may have mismatching versions of React and the renderer, such as React DOM. You may be breaking the rules of hooks. Okay, so something to do with with the motion cache. Um, that is interesting. Let's see. So let's try a little Googling. project. Not quite the same. Um, ooh. So we were looking before at React Admin and looking at its package JSON and kind of the versioning. Um, maybe up until now this is not a problem, but maybe the... because we have a direct dependency in our package JSON on React and React DOM, but maybe it's different than the version that we are pulling in here. So let's let's go back to let's do this really quick. NPM ls, uh, and then we want to look for React Admin. I want to know exactly the version that we're currently on. here is that this is the version installed in the, the local folder here which may not be exactly the same version as what's running inside of the docker container right because we're running npm install inside of the docker container so it might be a slightly different version but it should be pretty close um, with the with the carry okay and then if we look at what are the dependencies listed in package.json? Any? No. Um, 
Let's take a look at the UI package. That's where it's going to depend on uh, React. Maybe. Dev dependencies, peer dependencies. 16 or 17 or 18 something. Um, so how are we... Let me pull up Docker really quick again. Are we rerunning npm install on each one of these restarts? Looks like we are. Uh, this message is coming from running React uh, or npm install. So let's see, change reloading. Interesting. Interesting. What does it mean? Let's try refreshing one more time, just in case. Oh, hey, look, it works. <laughs> Without changing anything. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, no, 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 that's normal. That's to do with uh, Vite and stuff. So whatever we did, it's not crashing anymore. I think um, maybe that was Vite having to reload. So there was a message in the Docker right here. New dependencies optimized. Movie materials style. So this is the new thing we imported. Optimized dependencies changed reloading. So maybe that looks like that was like a minute after the reload. So I guess that fixed it, whatever it did. So here's our span and our span. Um, all right, so we're not gonna see much of anything. So here's the, the div that's wrapping the whole thing. And you can see there's a, a class here. So that's that styled um, function that we, we called down down yonder. That, that's providing the class name prop to the stream transcript input component. Now, to actually apply the styling to the segment, uh, we need to do a thing. I think we just need to add like a class name. There we go, label classes that segment. Right, so we're using this object that we defined down here to match up um, the styling to the element. And this seems like a good idea. You can imagine, especially if you have lots of things. Imagine if I didn't do this and I just put like, you know, segment. Uh, it might be tricky to find all the places if I wanted to rename it.